Another property is for, for sequences is something called the squeeze theorem, or sometimes referred to as the Berger theorem. So suppose we have three sequences, and the elements B n is smaller than a n, and a n is at least of the uh, uh, at most C n. So we can line them up, and suppose that the limit of the outside sequences, so B n and C n have the same limit. So the limit for n to infinity of B n equals the limit of n to infinity C n equals L. Then, well, there's not so much space to move around for the sequence A n, so A n must have the same limit L. So I will illustrate this using the following example. Uh, sometimes it's it's convenient when you cannot calculate a limit directly that you actually actually compare some terms. So, for instance, here we have a sequence the cosine is of n squared plus one divided by n. And typically, we don't know any formula to calculate these uh, uh, the, the limit of such a sequence, but we know that the cosine is always smaller than one. And the cosine is, is also larger than minus 1. So actually, when we look at the sequence, the cosine is of n squared plus 1 divided by n, then actually I can make a known sequence. So the cosine of n squared plus 1 divided by n is smaller than 1 over n and larger than minus 1 over n. Yeah? And this is all due to the fact that the cosine is, has only attains only values in the interval minus one one. Now look at the sequences one over n and minus one over n. And it's not hard to see or to prove, do it yourself, that the limit of n to infinity minus one over n equals the limit of n to infinity one over n equals zero. So actually, we have that the outside you know, a row, uh, the sequence below and sequen sequence above with the same limit. So the sequence in between must have also the same limit. So the limit of n to infinity of the cosines of n squared plus 1 divided by n equals 0.